Hello everybody. This tutorial will basically be an introduction to variables. Let's go ahead and open up our web browser to my website, thegpu.com. Click on learn more and we'll scroll down here to see tutorials. And then we'll click on introduction to variables. So a variable is a name memory location that can be assigned a value while the program is running. At a bare minimum, a variable is declared using one of the four fundamental data types. So for example, we've got a data type of int right, which is integer, and then a variable name myInt. So you can see in the comment here, I got data type, variable, followed by a semicolon, which terminates the declaration. So let's talk a little bit about naming conventions. Naming conventions, what you name your variables is very important here, and the following list details the rules that apply to what you can and cannot name your variables. Variables are case sensitive. So if you name your variable myInt, lowercase m, right, equals 9 and then you got another variable named my uppercase m these are two distinct variables and they'll hold two different values I don't recommend you do this but it is it will compile and it is valid it's just confusing and can lead to some very bad bugs in your code now you cannot use the same variable name more than once in other words you can't declare in this example int length and double length that's not valid Variable names can only contain letters, numbers, or an underscore. All other characters, including white space, are invalid. Here's some valid examples. Day 5, day underscore 5, camel case, camel case names, underscore names. Invalid examples. We got a space in between day and 5. We got a dash in number 6. We got an and in the egg and I, and a test dot it. The dot is not valid. <coughs> Excuse me. Variable names cannot begin with a number and should not begin with an underscore. Even though you can begin a variable with an underscore and the program will compile, there's a chance you may accidentally name your variable the same name as one of the C language built-in variable names. Now, C language built-in variable names are not the same as reserved words, also known as keywords. So some invalid examples would be starting this off with five, fifth day of the month, third edge, ninth element. Those are invalid. You want to avoid starting something off with an underscore, like underscore my int, underscore height, or underscore anything. Do not name a variable the same name as a command or function. So invalid examples would be declaring like int printf equals 6, right? And printf is a function. And now here's the thing. When you're starting out programming, you don't know what a lot of these names are. And I'll give you a solution here at the end of this that'll help you avoid this sort of stuff. We haven't even gone over what scanf is yet, but doing this you'll be naming variables is the same thing as a command or function. You don't want to do that. Keep the length of the name of your variable to 31 characters or less. Some compilers do support longer names, but in older, uh, in older versions and in order to maintain cross-platform cross cross-compiler compatibility. Wow, I created a tongue tire for myself there. Just stick with 31 characters or less. Do not name a variable the same name as one of the C keywords. And these are the basic C keywords right here. I won't read them all off to you, but you can read those yourself there. And then finally, my personal recommendation. Use camel case to name your variables and begin the variable name with a lowercase letter and then an uppercase letter for the first character of each subsequent word in the variable name. Common C function names are all lowercase, and as a beginner, you will have no knowledge of common function names, so camel casing your variable names will not cause duplication of function names in other C internal, inter, other internal C names. Now additionally, camel case is the variable naming convention for many modern languages, and consistency is always a good thing. So let's talk about declaring variables. Now the concept of declaring a variable is incredibly simple but comes with some hidden pitfalls. So um, you basically have a data type and a variable name followed by a semicolon. That is all there is to declaring a, um, a variable. So the statement above declares, also known as defines, a simple variable name myInt of data type int. That's pretty simple, right? Now not so fast, what does the value of my int contain? And the answer is a total garbage value. Um, we fix the garbage by issuing a garbage issue by initializing the variable, okay? Um, now let's talk about initializing variables. So we initialize a variable by, signing, by assigning an initial value to the variable. We do so by using one of many C operators and that's the assignment operator which is equals. Now the assignment operator 
can assign many different things to a variable value, but for now we will simply use the assignment operator to assign a literal value to the variable. A literal value, I need a little typo there, a literal value is a hard-coded value within the valid range of the data type, uh, data type of the variable, right? And the data type, for example, here being int, right? For example, um, like doing a single quote B, single quote, that's, that's a literal, right? The number two, ni negative 9,812, 100.99, etc. So we say int my int, and if we put a semicolon after this, we would just be declaring the variable, but initializing it, we use the assignment operator, and then we assign it to the literal value of zero, right? Data type, variable, assignment operator, literal value zero. Now, until you become an expert in C programming, always initialize a variable with a simple generic value. You will save yourself some massive headaches in the future by adhering to this advice. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, let's move this off screen here. We'll come over to our main desktop here, and I've got a shortcut to the command prompt on my desktop. If you don't, you create one really fast by right-clicking, select the new shortcut, CMD next, and finish. It's just that easy. First thing we, actually, let's get rid of this second one, keep that clean. Open this up. What I'm going to do is type in GCC. You should see this error pop up. Fatal error, no input files, compilation terminated. If you get any other error, like for example, it can't find the whatever, blah, 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 watch my tutorial on installing a C compiler, which will be this GCC compiler here, and um, then come back and continue on. CLS to clear the screen, CD space backslash, change directory to the root, basically. I'll make a directory here called C demo. Now I already have that folder, but if you don't, it'll create it for you. Let's change directories to the C demo folder, and let's make another directory here called uh, variables. Change directories to the variables folder, and I'm on a notepad variables.c. Variables.c, of course. Uh, .c is the C compile or the source code file there. Let's pull back over the web browser and let's come down here to the source code section let's highlight all that select copy we got a lot to go over in this tutorial here so and let's come over here and paste it um, let's come up here and save this first of all now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run we're gonna come down here compile and run this program and then we're gonna play around with it here so let's just clear our screen here type in GCC variables.c minus lowercase o for output, right, and variables. That'll create a variables.exe. Right, if we do a directory, there's our variables.exe. Let's go ahead and run our variables.exe. And um, <clears throat> these first two lines right here, let's come back to the program right here. So I've got my naming conventions here. As you can see, I have initialized this my int variable with lowercase m to equal the literal nine, the integer literal nine, and this upper uppercase m my int variable. I've initialized that and assigned it the value of the literal 15. And as you can see, using printf, which is a function I haven't gone over with yet, but I will in a future tutorial. So don't worry about if this stuff doesn't make much sense to you, it shouldn't at this point. Um, but just know we've got like the way it works is I'll give you just to kind of a little heads up on there, a little taste of it. We've got the variable my int and using basically like this little string literal here, putting in a percent d is for basically an integer value and then slash n is a new line here. So on the console, what we see is we see my int equals nine, my int equals 15. Two separate variables, I highly recommend you don't do this, but C is a case sensitive language, so you need to understand that this is perfectly valid, but uh, nobody wants to see this. Okay, now let's comment out the next thing here, in which case we're assigning int length equals 12, double length equals 12.5. Let's come back up here, save this. Let's hit our up arrow a couple of times, recompile. And as you can see, when we recompile, we now get some errors here, right? We get error, conflicting types for length. And as you can see, it's, um, it's basically saying, Note, previous definition of length was right here. Okay, so the compiler's smart enough to figure that out, and so you cannot do this. All right, let's just go ahead and kind of clean this up as we go here. I'm just gonna delete this, uh, come back up here, save this. Now, um, the next thing I wanna talk about is basically valid names, okay? 
If we un uh, let's just let's just save this. Let's hit our up arrow. So everything compiles. We're all cool right now. Now if we uncomment this, our invalid names, where we got day space five number dot six egg and I and test dot it. Um, let's go ahead and compile and see what kind of errors we get there. Okay, so we get a lot of different errors there. Um, and they're, they're kind of cryptic, you know? Uh, they don't really make much sense, but it's pointing to various different areas where it really just doesn't like stuff. And um, basically that's that's the reason why. Those are invalid invalid characters used in variable names there. Okay, so pretty simple on that. All right, so let's now talk about the next naming convention, which is we cannot begin um, a variable with a number. So let's come back down here. We're going to get another, oh wait, I didn't save that. Save. All right, let's clear our screen, recompile, and we're, now we're getting errors again here, right? So it says invalid suffix on integer constant, right? And that's because this we're beginning this with a five, a three, and a nine. So that's what we come up with there. So you cannot begin your variable names with an integer there. As you can see, we did not receive any errors on this. Now this is valid, but we want to avoid because it's not a good idea to start a variable with an underscore, right? Okay, so let's go ahead and move on here. Let's take these guys out here. Um, the next one produces some interesting results here. So let's say, for example, we do int printf equals six. That's perfectly valid. The printf function is actually contained in this file, this st, the standard IO header file basically here. And so let's just go ahead and save this. Let's clear our screen and let's recompile again, right? Um, and, oh, so what, what, what happened here is we got a whole crap ton of errors. And the reason why we got a bunch of errors is because I just named this this int variable printf, right? And assigned it to this literal value of six so anything below this all these calls to printf down here all failed out let's go and do a multi-line comment from here all the way down to here let's save this and then recompile okay uh, let's clear our screen off first and as you can see that recompiles just fine no problem there i'm going to uncomment this next line out here right and uh, we'll recompile this and now it says Error called object is not a function or function pointer, right? So it no longer recognizes what printf is. Now we could do some other interesting things here, like comment this out. Now if we come down here and save this, and then we uh, recompile this here, um, and then if we we run this, we actually get printf equals some weird garbage number there. So it's always a very bad idea to do anything that, uh, don't, don't, name, don't name a variable the same name as a function. You're gonna get some bizarre stuff going on in your code if it even compiles. So, all right, let's go ahead and take out our multi-line comment and move on down to the next thing there. All right, so I've got this int variable name should be less than 31 characters. This is just stupid. Now, don't ever do this. Your coworkers will just hate you because anytime you use this variable, you have to like type out that whole entire thing or cut and paste it or whatever, but it's just ridiculous, right? Ridiculous equals one, okay? All right, I am going to go ahead and do something real quick here. I'm going to um, what we're going to do is on declaring variables, naming conventions, we're going to take this out here and let's just go ahead and save this. Let's close it out. We're going to close out our command prompt there and then reopen it here. Okay. Now, um, the reason why I'm doing this is because we had the initializing variables. We need to show you how un unreliable that is there. I'm not initializing, declaring variables there. So let's change directories to the variable folder. Let's notepad our um, variables.c again. Okay, so we're in the declaring variables section here, right? Um, let's go ahead and do a GCC. Uh, let's actually do a directory here. I'm gonna delete the variables.exe. 
and throw our screen. So we've got, we're just doing like a fresh start here on this. Let's go ahead and do gcc variables.c minus o for our output file name. And we want that to be variables. And then let's just go ahead and run variables.exe. Okay. Um, yeah, you know, it's still got it in memory there. It, it, the, what I was going to show you here. So we've, we're declaring this variable new int, right? And then the value that new int holds, you could see is just total garbage here. Uh, whatever this is, right? And then we've declared another double pi and a char letter a and displaying those to the console there. But, um, after a while, like you'll get some good values in there. So we're just going to rename this, this variable here to, uh, uh, we'll just call this variable Dan. That sounds good to me. And then we'll display Dan, right? We'll say Dan equals. And let's come back up here and save this. Recompile, rerun. Ah, shoot, it's not doing it. Sometimes you'll get uh, very bizarre results where this like will be like a giant number there, okay? I'm gonna do, actually, you know what I'll do? I'll add another double variable in here and see if I can get this to, to do the really strange stuff. I'll just call this ASDF, right? And we'll come down here, print ASDF. Let's come up, save this. Recompile, rerun. And we're still getting the zero, zero, zero. Anyway, but um, it kind of sucks that uh, that I'm getting that right at the moment there, because normally we'd be getting some really strange values there. But for one reason or another, it's actually pointing to memory locations that don't actually contain anything right at the moment. But that's not guaranteed. As you can see, the new int contains complete garbage there. So that kind of bombed out for that. But um, anyway, let's just go ahead and move on. Now in your, what'll probably happen when you guys run this is you'll get different values. You might actually see some really strange stuff coming into here, here, and here. So other than the default stuff there, okay? So let's move out, out of the declaring variables on that. And let's come up here, save this. And let's clear our screen. And recompile and rerun, okay? so. Initializing variables, setting um, box length here, right, equal to 12. And this is camel case, it's descriptive and easy to read, this is good. Same thing here, box width equals eight, box height equals five. We're initializing all of these variables, we're not just declaring them, okay? And then just displaying those values to the console, length 12, width eight, height five, right? No unpredicted results there, char letter B, right? And we put in that there. Right, letter B equals that. If you wanted to initialize a lot of variables, a good idea to initialize, for example, if you're not gonna be using it right away, just initialize letter B to a space, right? Um, you could initialize box length equal to zero, right? Is a very good, good generic value for an integer. Um, so anyway, that's basically about how that works there. Um, now, the last thing that I've gotten here is I'm initializing, um, I've got the data type int, and then I'm doing box volume using the assignment operator, and I'm initializing this to basically an equation here. So, um, the result of box length times box width times box height. And this is another form of initialization. I didn't go over that, but I'm just kind of giving you guys a little taste of other ways that we can initialize variables here. And then when we display box volume to the console, we get 480, which of course is 12 times eight times five. So, and then of course we're returning zero, which terminates our program on that. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and close out of this, close out of that and just leave you guys with some final thoughts here. So I just wanna reiterate a point from my last tutorial, the concept of variables and what they represent is a fairly complicated subject in C programming. So take your time and make sure that you understand each concept along the way and you will be just fine. That concludes this tutorial. Thanks for watching.